Hello, in this presentation we're going to take a look at lists within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been continuing along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If you have access to the backup, you can restore the backup by going to the File tab and restoring the backup. We're going to open the Open Windows or the View Windows tab by going to View up at the top and Open Window List first item. Therefore, we can, and once we do that, we can see the open windows. I'm going to close everything but the home tab, closing any other open windows we have open, only having now the home tab open. And to get to the home tab, we can go to the company file and home page. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at lists. And lists is kind of a technical term within QuickBooks, meaning more than just a list of items in that it's going to group lists into the drop down here. So we're going to be looking at these and these are going to be really important items in that they're often the items that are driving a lot of the functions that we see here on the home page, meaning the lists are where we do the setup process so that when we select these items for the day-to-day -day data, uh, data input, it's a lot easier that these day-to-day uh, -day data input items will be run and driven through the making of the lists. So these lists are often things that we have to do in the setup process and get them correct. And once those are set up correctly, that being often the most difficult part, the actual processing of these systems, of these cycles, the vendor cycle, the payable cycle, the customer cycle, the sales cycle, the employee cycle, uh, will all be much easier to do. What do we have under the lists? Main list will be the chart of accounts followed by the item list. We've got the fixed asset item list. We're not going to spend time on with this. The price level list, not spending time on with this. Sales tax code list, we'll touch on that. That's going to give us the sales tax. If there is a sales tax within the location that we are at, we'll have to set that up within the list. We have the payroll item list. Those are going to be the main lists we want to take a look at here, starting with the chart of accounts. Now clearly the chart of accounts is going to be something that we will have to set up. These are the actual account names and they're going to always be set up in terms of ordering in assets, liabilities, equity, income, and then expense. More specifically within the assets we have the bank accounts followed by the receivables, the accounts receivable, followed by the other current assets, then the fixed assets, then the other assets. Then we go to the liabilities, starting with the liability of accounts payable, liability account types. Notice these are not accounts, these are account types. The actual accounts are over on this side. Then we have other liabilities, credit card account types, other current liabilities, long-term liabilities, equity and income type accounts. The names are going to be over here. So note that it's not in alphabetical order. It's in order by account type. And then within each account type, we are in order by alphabetical order. If you don't understand what these account types are, that's okay. We're going to walk through how to set those up. And QuickBooks allows us a process when we set up the, pro the QuickBooks file, depending on the type of company we have, to set up uh, the chart of accounts for us and at least give us a starting point with which to work. But we really need to have some understanding of what these account types are in order for us to put together the system to make the day-to-day -day data input much easier. If this system isn't set up correctly first, then the day-to-day -day data input is much more difficult. Also note that we could use account numbers over here as well. That gives us a little bit more control uh, within each account type in the ordering. It can also be a bit more complicated too, so if, you're not, if you don't understand these account types, you may want to stay away from accounts and numbers because it's very likely that we will number the accounts incorrectly or in a way that doesn't make sense. Let's take a look at another list. We're going to select the drop down and take a look at the item list. Item lists are often overlooked. They're a huge component in the day-to-day -day process and getting everything working within QuickBooks. Often overlooked in terms of how QuickBooks works because we don't really see the items as we do the chart of accounts. We all know that there's going to be a chart of accounts when we create the financial statements those are accounts on them. The items though are the things that are driving normally when we make things like invoices and sales receipts. 
So they're going to include our uh, sales items, including our service items, if we make service sales, and our inventory items. So whenever we make an invoice, we, we have to have this item. And if we have the item set up before we make the invoice, making the invoice is very easy. All we have to do is set up the invoice. We don't need to know anything. We can hire someone to make the invoice. Not a problem. If we don't have the item set up, invoicing, not so easy. We got to do a little bit more understanding. Even with the item set up, we're going to have to really see what it's doing in order to understand the financial statements. And in order to set the, the items up, we're going to have some understanding. We need to have some understanding of what the financial statements will result in when we do something like create an invoice, create a sales receipt. So don't worry about that. We're going to get into that later. Uh, this is a, one of the really key components to understanding how QuickBooks works is setting up these items. We're going to go back up to the lists up top, going back to the lists we're going to skip down to the sales tax code items, sales tax code items. And within the sales tax code, this is a breakdown specifically of items related to sales tax, like a value added tax. And that will change depending on location, depending on state or country we are in. We'll have to set those up and be able to apply them or not apply them. Meaning when we make an invoice, sometimes, for example, merchandise might be applicable to sales tax where, where we will have to apply sales tax to it and then the other items such as service items may not be applicable to sales tax and therefore we would have none for the service items so we'll need those for uh, invoices and sales receipts as well going back to the drop down scrolling back down to the payroll item list the payroll item list another crucial crucial list if we are running payroll and the payroll item list will make the payroll process much easier and possible. Without the payroll item list, then the payroll process is not doable or very much more difficult. So we need to set up the items. If, this, if the items are set up properly, then the payroll is pretty easy to process through. But you'll note within the payroll process, we have a lot of these items, including we've got whether we're going to pay salary, hourly, uh, we also have the withholding information in terms of Medicare, Social Security, federal income tax. And we'll also have, if we're in different states or different countries, different state taxes. And those ones often vary from state to state. And we have to be very careful to make sure that we are putting in the proper tax because it could vary. The federal taxes, such as uh, Medicare, Social Security, those two uh, are national taxes in the U.S. and therefore QuickBooks can pretty much put those together and we're pretty sure on those but state to state taxes we could have some of the items that we want to make sure that we're checking what our specific um, rates are in our state and for our particular company depending on the type of taxes that we are putting together we might have some other items that are being uh, used within the payroll process too to help us process the payroll and take out whatever necessary withholdings are needed throughout the payroll process. Very, very important part. Again, one of those parts that uh, we have to really kind of understand a bit in order to set them up. Once set up, then we can allow someone to run the payroll process who doesn't fully understand the process too much, right? They don't need to really know how to understand what is happening to the financial statements or how the withholdings are happening to process payroll. But in order to set up payroll, in order to really understand how the financial statements are being generated, then we need to have a better understanding of that. And we will go through this when we set up the payroll process. We'll take a look at some of these items, how these items work, how to calculate some of this stuff. Other lists we have, if we go down to the list, we have some other list names, and we, other, we also have a list of vendors and profile lists. So, so we've got the sales rep list, we've got the customer type list, the vendor type list, the job type list, the terms list, the customer message list. So you can take a look at some of these other lists as well. But the principal lists we will be working with when setting up these uh, accounts and setting up QuickBooks in general will be the chart of accounts, the item list, and the payroll item list in particular. Those are driving lists. Those are really important items. Those are necessary things to know to set up the QuickBooks account. Those are things that we'll go over. Those are things that we'll get a better understanding of 
once set up, those are things that really allow a user who doesn't understand those things very well to then uh, do the day-to-day -day, do the day-to-day -day process, which we can see just through if we go back to the home page, the flow charts. We can that allows us these lists being put together properly allows us to go through these flow charts and basically do the day-to-day -day tasks, whether we are working in the vendors payable section the customer receivable or sales section or the payroll section of the home page entering data.